So, today uh, we will discuss about the transverse and longitudinal wave and we will uh, we'll show you how, how we can measure the uh, velocity of, uh, of the waves. So, uh, let us know what is transverse wave and, and longitudinal wave. So, oscillation of a mass body particle or atom under restoring force, right. Oscillation of a mass is nothing but the, uh, the, uh, the oscillation of a body under restoring force. So, uh, as for example, we have seen this uh, spring mass system, simple or compound pendulum. So, these are the standard examples of, of, of this oscillator, simple harmonic oscillator. So, this a single particle, it can be a heavy mass, it can be a very light mass like atom. So, they can oscillate if there is a restoring force. So, we have performed the experiment of, of spring mass system and compound pendulum in, in our earlier classes. So, next also we have performed another experiment that is coupled oscillation or coupled pendulum. So, basically two simple pendulum was coupled with a, with a spring. So, uh, so that is a, uh, that is a coupled pendulum, coupled between two pendulum. And that experiment we have performed and what we have seen, if I disturb one's, one oscillator, then that disturbance, that energy transferred to the uh, another oscillator, right. So, now we think if I coupled many oscillators, similar oscillators, okay, then if I disturb ones, then this disturbance, the, this energy will transfer to the next one, then from next to the this other one. So, that way ultimately what will happen? So, I, if I disturb this first one, the disturbance will reach to the uh, to the end of the of the basically string of oscillators. Okay. So, so basically coupled oscillator. So, if you can think this, this is the mass spring mass system. So, many masses are coupled through the spring. So, this is basically coupled oscillator. Now, if I just disturb one, this first one, so that disturbance will transfer to the second one from second to third. So, that way it will reach to the other end. Okay. So, something is traveling, okay. the energy is traveling. So, this traveling through the oscillation of the of the of the of the medium of the medium. So, now whatever we tell this waves are moving. So, waves are moving through a medium say sound wave. It is moving through a through a through a uh, medium. So, basically disturbance at one place is reaching to the other uh, other end other other places. Okay. So, that is that is basically due to the the due to the oscillation of the of the of the atoms of the of the medium okay so so uh, these waves that concept is coming from the basically oscillation so is the oscillation waves is nothing but the collective oscillations of many oscillators coupled oscillators so when we consider a medium so it take it as a continuous medium. So, but this medium is made of atoms. So, we can take the array of the of the uh, atom in a medium. So, this your waves is passing through this through this array. It is basically it is it is it is passing through the oscillation of this array. Okay. So, that is the wave. So, waves from oscillator then couple oscillator from this from this couple oscillator oscillation of couple oscillator is basically the waves it 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 uh, it forms waves okay 
So oscillation of a particle in the chain with time or displacement of all particles in the chain at a particular time is called wave. So if I tell wave this, the picture, uh, you just, you will come in your mind that it is just varying like this, it is varying like this, right. So this variation, what is varying? It is basically, it is, it is, it is whatever varying we are telling there is the amplitude of the oscillator is varying, amplitude of the oscillator is varying as a function of time or as a function of, uh, of, uh, of distance or as a function of both. So, basically wave will be then oscillation of a, uh, of a, of a, of a particle in the chain as a function of x or t or both, that is the wave. So, this variation here, this displacement of a particle in the chain is varying like this with time, with time. So, that is then this, this also is waveform. Also, this displacement is varying as a function of uh, distance okay, in the chain. So, this variation is also like this. So, this is the waveform, this is the basically we are telling wave. So, this wave is uh, so basically if you now you take a string, if you take a string of wire or a thread okay, and, and this string is basically made of many atoms, it is made of many atoms. So, disturbance if you disturb at this place this disturbance will move then will moves like this okay so this we are we tell is this a wave right so wave is nothing but the you see this individual uh, displacement of individual atoms of the chain of the string okay at a particular either at a particular time as i told or or if at a particular time, then we look at a particular position. Means we uh, we we see the oscillation of a particular particular atom on the of the string, or at a particular time. Just if you take picture, so this so at that time, what is the what is the position? What is the displacement of all atoms on the string? So this. This that displacement of all the atoms on the string will be like this for a particular time. Okay, so at different time this this form changes. This form changes. So so this is the basically is the is the concept of wave. So this uh, uh, when that displacement is in a transverse direction or the perpendicular direction of the motion of the of the perpendicular direction of the motion of the uh, of the wave then that wave is called the transverse wave if if the displacement is in longitudinal direction or or the same direction of the of wave propagation then we tell the longitudinal wave okay so here just we have set up we have set up for a for a uh, for a transverse wave as well as for, for longitudinal wave. So, here you can see this, this is a string, this is a, uh, a string is the, is the basically thread. Okay? So, we have taken that distance between this string, distance between this string, uh, between this end and this other end between this end, this other end. Okay. So, this other end basically here we put some weight. So, that is a tension uh, of this of this wire of this uh, thread basically. So, we can change the tension of the of the thread changing the mass of the of the uh, of, uh, of this uh, end. So, so this is a basically string here I will show you the formation of transverse wave and then we will measure the some, some velocity uh, of, uh, of the transverse wave in this thing 
Okay. So, this is one experiment where we will see the transverse waves and another experiment I will show you, I will show you this is the ER column. Okay. So, here uh, this here this other end the uh, other end of this tube is is basically closed because it is in water and this this end this top end is basically open as a ER. So, between this water end and this open end, so this is a ER column is there. So, here if I disturb this ER column, so here this basically longitudinal wave will be formed that I cannot I cannot show you, uh, but transverse wave I will show you. So, this this basically is example of longitudinal wave, this other one is example of transverse wave. So, uh, let us uh, discuss uh, about the about the uh, working formula for these two experiments. So, uh, so you know this uh, superposition of two waves. Okay. So here basically superposition will work. Superposition of two waves. So two waves of same frequency and amplitude moving in opposite direction. Okay. So, in this condition we get standing wave, two waves of same frequency and same or different amplitude moving in same directions. Okay. So, then we get interference, two waves of slightly different frequency and same amplitude moving in same or opposite direction, then it form the then we tell is bit. Okay. So, this is the superposition of, of two waves. So, here basically whatever you will see that is the basically su superposition of two waves. Okay. So, it may be longitudinal or transverse. So, this, this wave traveling wave is expressed as a this y is a basically displacement equal to a amplitude a sin k x minus omega t. As I told that this wave equation will be wave that basically here the displacement uh, of oscillator individual oscillator. Uh, so, that is the that that when that is that is a function of of x and t then that is the wave equation basically. Okay. So, y equal to a sin k x minus omega t. So, k is 2 pi by lambda is tell we, we, we tell this k is a wave vector, wave vector. So, it is a k equal to 2 pi by lambda and omega is 2 pi by t. So, lambda and t, this the lambda is the periodicity in, 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 in length okay. and this t capital T is the periodicity in time. Okay. So, so that is what I, I, I showed you. Uh, that two picture you can take one is at a particular time but as a function of x. So, then this periodicity uh, basically I have shown in the next page I guess uh, let me show you. Okay. So, uh, let me show you here. So, this is the, uh, this is the periodicity in, in, in length. Okay. So, here periodicity so, if you take this point then this is a complete period, complete uh, one. So, that is the periodicity, that is the this is the length, this length is basically lambda. Okay. So, lambda is the wavelength basically and this it is nothing but the periodicity in length. And uh, if I plot it as a function of time, so similarly we will get uh, this type of uh, nature of disturbance of displacement. Okay. So, then this periodicity will be in time and that that is what we tell time period. So, uh, so this is the wave equation y equal to a sin omega t a sin k x minus omega t where omega is 2 pi by t and k is 2 pi by lambda. Right. So, so transverse wave in a string that experiment as I as I show you, I will show you transverse wave in a string. So, what is the aim of this experiment? Aim of this experiment is to determine the phase velocity of the stationary waves. 
produced in a stream. So, to determine this phase velocity, we have to measure basically wavelength lambda, frequency nu, frequency nu and time period t. Okay. So, of the string and mass per unit length of the string. Also from this experiment, you can measure the mass per, uh, no, no, you have to know this uh, mass per unit of the length. So, if you know, if you know this, uh, uh, yes, if you know the, if you know the lambda new frequency time period, okay, either measuring or, or some, some, some supplied value and here mass per unit length of the string probably this will supply okay mass per unit length of the string this will be supplied and other you have to measure so so for traveling so transverse wave so basically we will produce stationary wave in this thing uh, why stationary wave will be produced so definition of stationary waves i have told you so, here uh, I will tell, show you that uh, why the stationary waves we are getting here. So, uh, super stationary wave you will get because of superposition of two waves. Okay. So, y 1 equal to a sin k x minus omega t and y 2 equal to a sin k x minus omega t plus delta. So, when stationary waves form, when they, when they uh, move in opposite direction as definition I told you stationary wave the same amplitude and same frequency two waves of same frequency and amplitude moving in opposite direction. Okay. So, then it is the standing wave. So, here so this is the superposition between these two waves superposition between these two wave. Okay. So, that y equal to y 1 plus y 2 and from here you can find this relation. Okay. So, 2 a sin delta by 2 minus omega t cos k x minus delta by uh, 2. So, delta is basically phase difference between the two waves. So, that can be 0 also, but that uh, in general this is the this the uh, term of uh, it is called phase. So, now uh, if you put the boundary condition one is y is 0 at x equal to 0. So, in your string, so length is a basically x. So, this x equal to 0 uh, also y equal to 0 at x equal to L. So, just to extreme end of the string at one end x equal to 0, so other end x equal to capital L. So, displacement at these two points is 0, right. So, that is a y is 0. And using this boundary condition, basically this y equal to 0 at x equal to 0, if you use this boundary condition, then y is this one, right. So, x equal to 0 means k x part will go, k x part will go. So, cos delta by 2. Now, here uh, uh, you are getting 2 a sin k x sin k x omega t. If you use this boundary apply condition at x equal to 0, y equal to 0, uh, if you put there, so then uh, uh, you will get some condition. Okay. So, putting this condition in this equation, you will get ultimately y equal to 2 a sin k x cos omega t. And then, uh, because some terms will come cos delta by 2. Okay. So, from there, you will show that delta is basically 0. Uh, that means, cos delta is, uh, is uh, 1. So, that is why it will come in this form. Uh, then, another condition if we apply at at x equal to capital L y equal to 0. So, sin k L equal to 0. So, from here you are getting k L equal to n pi, n is integer. So, k is 2 pi by lambda into L equal to n pi. So, L equal to n lambda by 2. Okay. Lambda is a, as I told wavelength, wavelength. So, 
of that periodicity in, in space, periodicity in length, so that is the uh, wavelength and n is called mode. Okay. So, for n equal to 1, we tell this as a fundamental mode or the first mode. So, when it oscillates, so it has different mode, it is a fundamental mode, uh, then overtones okay. or we tell first harmonic, second harmonics, okay. n equal to 1, 2, 3. So, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, first harmonic is basically it is called fundamental for that n equal to 1. Okay. So, uh, so, for n equal to 1, then that sting you will see in this form. Okay. The sting you will see in this form. So, this is called antinode and this where y equal to 0, this is called node. Okay. So, here n equal to, then we tell this n equal to 1, so that is the fundamental mode. So, that means, if number of antinodes is 1, so that is a fundamental mode or first harmonic. If, if this number of antinodes is 2 in the string, so then n equal to 2, so this is the second harmonics or first overtone. Okay. If n equal to 3, so 3 antinodes. So, if, if, I, if, if, I, if, if I can count the number of nodes or number of antinodes, basically we will count number of antinodes, then then from here uh, and length of the string I know okay. and I will count number of nodes or antinodes basically antinodes n. So, then I can find out lambda. So, I can find out the wavelength lambda right. So, if I can find out the wavelength of wavelength lambda then velocity is equal to is called phase velocity is the two types of uh, velocity, one is called phase velocity, another is called group velocity. So, I am not going in that, but just simply you consider this a velocity of, of these waves. So, this c equal to nu lambda. So, this is a standard formula, right? Velocity equal to c, uh, c velocity c equal to uh, nu lambda, nu is frequency and lambda is wavelength. So, so, uh, nu, nu is frequency. Now, in the string, string basically I have to vibrate the string. So, then the stationary wave will form. So, why stationary wave, wave will form that I will tell you. So, so I have to, I have to, so vibrate this string. So, that I have to, so, uh, so this, this what is the, what is the frequency of this vibration whatever we are, we are, uh, 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 we, we introduce, we introduce to the string. So, that new if I know, that new if I know, so for different new lambda will be different because C is constant. Okay. So, experiment is we will, we will apply different frequency and for that we will find out lambda and here we will find out the resonant condition. Okay. In resonant condition amplitude will be maximum, okay. amplitude will be maximum. Okay. So, then we can see easily okay. without resonance also is uh, there will be vibration, there will be standing wave, but, but we cannot see. Uh, the variation of amplitude because it will be very small, but at resonance condition with that amplitude variation will be maximum and easily we can find out the nodes and anti nodes. Okay. So, so, basically, so uh, we will we'll, we'll, we'll vary the frequency and we will find out the we will find out the number of anti nodes. Okay, when number of antinodes is 1, then we will tell this the fundamental mode. If number is 2, uh, number of antinodes is 2, then we will tell this the, uh, this is the first overtone, etcetera. So, our experiment is to in the string we will vary the, uh, will vary the, vary the uh, frequency and find out the different modes 
and for that different modes uh, will 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 get the lambda okay because this formula as I told you L equal to n lambda by 2. So, uh, so we can calculate this c. Also c is, uh, is square root of t by mu. What is the t? t is the tension as I showed you. So, we will put different mass and for the different mass, uh, for this different mass this string will be under different tension and if I know the mass of the mass of the of the string per unit length. So, that is mu. So, square root of t by mu that is the uh, that is the velocity that is the velocity uh, of waves in the string. Okay. So, this velocity also we can find out because t is known to us because I am putting mass this t is known to us. Okay. So, uh, uh, and this, this, if you know the mass per unit length of this thing, so then you can calculate C, or, 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 so from this measurement C you are getting, C you are getting. Now we can use this C here. So C is known to you, and T is also known to you because uh, you are putting different mass. You can find out this T tension. Okay. So, uh, that will be basically mg, mg, tension mg uh, for mass m. So, from this then you can find out the mass per unit length of your steam. Okay. So, this experiment let us, uh, uh, yeah, I will show you and then second experiment I will show you this longitudinal wave in a air column, longitudinal wave in a air column. So, uh, for this experiment again, so basically our aim is to determine the velocity of sound in air by resonating open air column. So, I showed you this open air column. So, uh, we will find out the velocity of sound in this through this air column and that method we will use that is basically called resonating open air column. Okay. So, so we will we'll, we'll, uh, I will I, I will tell you. Uh, this for this basically again this formula whatever we got L length of the string or length of the air column L equal to L equal to n lambda by 2 that is that is what I think we got L equal to n lambda by 2. Okay. So, again this n is is uh, I think yes is a uh, mode is the mode. Okay. Uh, so, n equal to 1 this fundamental mode or fundamental this uh, uh, yes uh, waves okay. and then overtone and then first or, or first harmonic second harmonic. So, n equal to 1, 2, 3 etcetera that is uh, I already I have described to you. So, this is for stationary wave. So, in air column also stationary wave will be formed and this same formula is will be used. So, in that case also I have to find out basically uh, n. So, that n will find out uh, of, uh, I think or lambda will find out. So, this uh, for a particular resonating frequency we have to find out this length of the air column. So, L will know, L will know. So, this length whether it is for first mode, first uh, the fundamental mode or overtones that we have to, we have to find out, we have to find out varying the length of the air column, varying the length of the air column. Okay. So, uh, basically here mainly we will use this, we will use the fundamental mode for different frequency. So, for different frequency resonating frequency we will find out fundamental mode and for each case we will see this length will be different that means lambda will be different. Okay. So, we will find out the lambda okay. and then C equal to again in lambda uh, new lambda. So, resonating frequency I know and lambda we will find out. So, velocity of sound will be C equal to new lambda. Okay. So, again here we have to 
measure the lambda, find out the lambda. So, lambda will get from this measuring the resonating length of the ER column. Okay. So, so, let us just quickly show you experiment, this very simple experiment. Let me show you this first uh, transverse rate. Okay. So, observation what we have to do? First, we have to we have to mass per unit length of the row. If it is known that you have to note down. Okay. And then tension T in the row, tension T in the row. So, so tension T in this row here, you see this there is a pan here on top of pan we are putting mass. So, this weight of this pan is 50, 50 gram. So, this capital L, uh, capital M that is basically the uh, small m is the mass of the pan and capital M is the mass placed on the pan. Okay. So, uh, so, small m is basically in our case this is the mass of this pan it is 50 gram and now we have placed at right now we have placed this 50 gram. So, that is capital M is 50 gram. So, these are total is 100 gram. Okay. So, tension T is basically M G. So, 100 gram and this uh, G of uh, acceleration due to gravity that value is known to us. So, that we have to note down mass of the pan is 50 gram and we will repeat the experiment. First, we have put 50 gram, then we will put 100 gram, then we will put 150 gram. So, for 3 tension, for 3 tension means for 3 mass of capital M, we will repeat the experiment. So, for a single mass, let me just show you and same way you can repeat the experiment. Okay. So, for that table, uh, uh, serial numbers and then what is the mass T equal to capital M plus small m this in gram, okay. uh, sorry G, G. So, this tension is in Newton. So, M G basically as I told. Okay. So, that you have to, so for each uh, tension we will uh, we'll take reading of this frequency. What is frequency? So, that I will show you now. So, frequency here you see, I have a string. So, now this string is under a stress, under a, under a tension. Okay. It is under a tension. Now, here, uh, here, so that end of the string is under tension and this end of the string here, you see, now I have to oscillate the string, you know. So, so with some frequency, okay. so I have to vibrate this string with some frequency. So, here manually I will not vibrate this thing. Here we are using one vibrator, electrical vibrator. Okay. So, you can see it is the it just it is just uh, vibrating. So, basically instead of I am not using my hand, basically we are using vibrator to vibrate this uh, vibrate this uh, string. So, now the frequency of this of vibration I can change. So, I have a I have a I have a meter frequency meter. Okay. I can change the amplitude as well as the frequency of this vibration. So, uh, if I change the if I change the frequency if I change the frequency you see now there will be some uh, resonant condition you see let me show you for smallest frequency for smallest frequency uh, yes it's uh, no no so i have to i have to i have to change very So, it looks it is
you see, uh, just he is very sensitive to the frequency. Okay. So, okay. So, here you can see, uh, so you are getting just one node, one antinode in this vibration. Okay. So, n equal to 1. So, length of this this wire is uh, of this string is is we have to measure. So, it is uh, uh, that we have to measure we have we have meter scale we have basically meter scale. So, one has to measure it I am not going to measure, but you have to measure and note down this uh, this uh, uh, length of the string okay, for this. So, L is known to you L is known to you. So, that L we have to uh, I think that L you have to note down okay, this L we have to note down. So, lambda equal to 2 L by n. So, now for this case L is known to you I think we should write on top of it because uh, this capital L is all the time for this experiment is fixed. Uh, so, now here n is number of loop for this case is, uh, is the 1 and for this at which frequency I got. So, that frequency I have to note down. So, 8 it is a varying from it is a varying from 8.7 to 8.9.3. So, I will take it as a 8.9. So, basically so then you take basically for each case you just uh, uh, take the 3 reading okay, and then average of this 3 frequency you take the uh, frequency of this uh, for this uh, standing wave for this fundamental mode. So, this you have to note down. So, then again I will change the frequency for for higher mode higher harmonics. Okay. So, let me vary and find out this uh, n for this uh, second harmonics. So, it is uh, it almost double it almost double. Okay. It is I have to be very careful now slowly I have to change. Yes, done. You see now this 2 number of antinodes is 2. Okay. Number of antinodes is 2. So, this is for 24 hertz also you have to note down also you have to note down the uh, this least count of this frequency meter and that is basically 0 0.1 hertz. Okay. So, you have to note down this, this uh, frequency and for that frequency number of for that frequency number of loops you have to note down the number of loops too. Now, then you change frequency number of loops you will get 3. Okay. So, this way you have to just uh, for a particular tension T. So, at least you take 3 reading okay, 3 for 3 n. So, number of loops is say 1, then 2, then 3 corresponding frequency you have to note down and then you calculate lambda and if you calculate lambda then nu is this. So, you will get the phase velocity c right? and also you will get from this square root of t by m t is known to you and mu is if it is given. So, then then you use and then find out this c and then you can compare or I will use this c for this uh, this calculation and I can calculate mass per unit length of the string. So, from this experiment also. Okay. So, then error analysis, discussion, precaution that is the standard steps you have to do since I have discussed these things in many uh, uh, for many experiments. So, this same thing I will not discuss here. So, next just if I go for the uh, longitudinal wave in a year column. So, this also as I mentioned what we have to do. So, basically we will measure the phase velocity of, 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 of phase velocity in air. So, that is basically sound 
sound wave. Okay. So, basically velocity of sound in air will measure. So, here also I have to find a bear here uh, resonating we have to uh, will we have to find out the uh, length of the air column. So, this is the resonating length of the air column. So, for a particular frequency, so we will vary this frequency and here in our case we will vary frequency for different frequency we will find out the different length of the air column resonating when there will be resonance. So, we will we'll see uh, so that how we will detect this resonance that is basically hearing the sound we will we'll, we can identify the resonance condition and then mode number n, n in our experiment uh, uh, n is we will take all the time is 1. So, then you can calculate the lambda. So, uh, n equal to 1 as I told. So, what I have to do only I have to find out the frequency nu for that frequency what is the resonating length of the air column. Okay. So, at least uh, we will use uh, 4 to 5 uh, different frequency and for that different frequency what are the different length and then different wavelength I will get lambda and for so then then for each frequency we will get wavelength and we can calculate the uh, velocity. Then we will take the average velocity of this all uh, five data. Okay. So, so after that error analysis discussion precaution there is the standard things you have to do it. So, let me show you now how we will find out the of the resonating length of air column for different frequency. Okay. So, here we have this set of. Okay. So, here you see basically. So, we have uh, water in this. Uh, uh, what is called in this tube okay. and another tube we have this this both end is open and it has scale you know it has scale. So, now uh, so now this 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 is a basically air inside this tube is now basically uh, this both end is both end are open. Okay. Now, if I put in this water in this water. So, now this end is closed. Now, uh, other end is open. Now, this air column is this. So, now air column I can this length of this air column I can vary. right? So, this is the advantage, this is the technique we have used that air column I can vary. Uh, length of the air column I can vary. So, now I have to find out the resonating length of the air column for a particular frequency. So, now to vary the frequency I have this uh, tuning fork, I have this tuning fork of different, uh, different frequency, this frequency is written here it is 512 okay. frequency is 512. So, this one is, uh, is uh, uh, 300 uh, how much here this one 300 I think something I cannot read it, but here I can see this is 320, this 320. So, I have this for this 300, uh, I think this is 288, so 288. So, I have here high fork, this tuning fork and this it has, so it has different frequency, it has different frequency. So, for this high frequencies I will find out the uh, resonating length of the air column that is what the experiment then I can calculate the uh, velocity of sound. So, high velocity I will get and then I will take the average of this. Okay. So, let me take just one. Okay. Let me take one for let me take this one. Okay. So, now so just I think uh, so, I have to vibrate this one, then it will emit, it will emit wave okay, of that frequency, of that frequency whatever written. Now, that, so now I will, 
I will I will keep this resonator close to this air column. So, that means this disturbance will transmit to this air column. So, that means I am disturbing this air column at this end with this frequency. Okay. Now, I will change the length of this air column. So, uh, it has natural frequency you know and then when the, these two frequency will match then there will be resonance and we will hear higher sound in resonance this basically amplitude will be maximum and square of amplitude is the is the uh, basically is the basically intensity. So, that is the intensity of sound. Okay. So, so let me let me see it. Okay. So, I am disturbing air column now changing the length no yes yes now this is the position for maximum sound yes so then i have to take this reading here okay so one has to do carefully okay one has to do carefully Yes. Oh, I have to probably I am touching this one. Yes. Okay. So it's the it looks to me twenty three. So this reading is twenty three, here it is zero. So this length of air column is twenty three for and I have to note down this frequency. Okay, it's the three twenty. So, frequency is 320 and this air column length is 23. Okay. So, then the same experiment I have to do for other, other one, yeah, it is the uh, 384 it seems, 384, yes, yes. So, this is the position for maximum sound. So, I have to take reading it is the around 22. Okay. So, that was 320 and this was 3, uh, 384. So, it is close value. So, that is why this length also close, but if I take it is very different one is also 288, this is 341. Okay. Ah, this is 512. So, I should get length, lower length at least half of it okay. around 12 I should get probably yes yes so i have to note down this one is the around 15 it seems yes around 16 so this length of this air column is 16 centimeters for this frequency this frequency is 512 okay so for different five frequency i will find out this uh, resonating ear, uh, uh, resonating ear, ear column length. Uh, so, this is the experiment. Then you will get the lambda from L equal to uh, uh, what is the formula for L equal to 2L by n, L equal to 2L by n, L equal to 2L by n, n is 1. I am just only this is the fundamental one, okay. n equal to 1 all the time. Uh, because uh, other also you can find out then you have to take this length is should be uh, this uh, higher length. So, uh, so that is why we are not varying this end, we are varying the this frequency. Okay. And for each frequency actually you have to find out uh, three times this air column length and then take the average of it because it is the as you uh, as I showed you this. Uh, um, uh, this measurement is not determination of this length is very, is not very precise, so it it uh, it varies. Okay, so it depends on the condition of uh, of your uh, hearing the sound. So it's better uh, you should take three times reading and then take average of it. Okay, and then this lambda this frequency is written on this uh, tuning fork, so that you have to note down. And then you can calculate velocity of sound V equal to nu, that frequency nu 
into this lambda from here. Okay. So, this is the very simple experiment, but this is the classic example of transverse wave and longitudinal wave and uh, uh, wave horn also I was able to show you transverse uh, in, in a string, but this in ER column I cannot, we cannot see, but you can realize that the same formula we, we are using okay, uh, for calculating the velocity of sound also. So, similar wave is formed in this air column, okay, this node antinode you will see. So, that is why I showed these two experiments together, so that you can uh, have feelings that okay, whatever in sting we saw the standing wave, the same standing, standing wave we this is formed in this air column also, that is the basically long for longitudinal wave. Okay. So, thank you for your attention. I will uh, stop here.